I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me for your reality news check. I'm going to begin with your headlines. Oh, the police in Brooklyn, New York. Yes, folks, it's bad. Also today, Mitt Romney and more of his hijinks. Plus, we have news for you of the show Gossip Girl. She had to have her hand amputated. We'll tell you about that. Also, Eddie Long, you remember him. Finally, he's stepping aside. Also today, a vaccine for a virus that could be used as a terrorist weapon against humans. Also today, your gas prices. Tell me this is not some cruel joke. Then we've got news for you of prostitution in France. Will it be outlawed? Yep. And then finally today, he ran the U.S. Airline Safety Watchdog Agency. But was he DUI? Yeah. Stay tuned. Here we go. We're going to begin in Brooklyn, New York, of all places. All right, state and local news. Uh, it doesn't look good for those hired to protect and serve in Brooklyn, New York. That's right. Cops there are being called out for a Facebook page where they called West Indians animals and savages. You betcha, folks. One comment reportedly said, drop a bomb and wipe them all out. Those are your cops, folks. Needless to say, the Facebook page is all gone, vanished, disappeared, but not forgotten, folks. That's right. Some of the remarks appear to have broken police department rules on race and ethnicity. Apparently, uh, the officers were mad because they had uh, been assigned to West Indian American Day Parade in Brooklyn. They were assigned to patrol that parade, and they were mad about that. Uh, the Facebook uh, reportedly, that page reportedly had 1,200 members. The postings so bad. Get this, folks. The postings were so bad uh, that when speaking about African Americans and West Indians, some participants warned others to be careful, beware about how their words uh, might be taken in a public setting that is open to internal affairs rats, as they called. And that's what they think of internal affairs, okay? Police officers, guess what, folks? They were not alone on the site putting up these disgusting remarks. Apparently, they were joined by city workers, including some members of the fire department. That's interesting. I guess it goes without saying that these officers are not the ones uh, that you would call if you need help because their help might hurt you more than it helps you. Well, where is internal affairs and what about the city workers and the firefighters? My question is, first of all, are they being disciplined and also how do they get paid? I'd love to know. How do they get paid because don't their salaries include tax revenue from African Americans and West Indians? Maybe these officers don't want the money. They are certainly free to quit their job at any time. Otherwise, shut up and suck it up and do your job, okay? All right, in the race for the presidency 2012, Mitt Romney, <laughs> apparently, he spent nearly $100,000 in state funds to replace computers in his office at the end of his term as governor of Massachusetts. That was in 2007, folks. The question is, why did he do it? Now, according to Reuters, it was part of an effort to keep the records of his administration a secret. And you want this man to be your president, okay? All right, it was a legal move. It was legal. It was not illegal. It was a legal move, but it was a highly unusual move. The question, of course, why did he do it? Well, apparently when Romney left the governorship of Massachusetts, that's not the only thing that happens. Not only did he replace all the computers, but apparently 11 of his aides bought the hard drives of their state-issued com computers to keep them. Now, we know nothing can really be erased from a hard drive, so they took the hard drive out bought the hard drive, took the hard drive and put it somewhere. I would just like to know where those hard drives are. So they didn't want anybody to know what was on their hard drives. All right, we should also tell you that uh, Reuters goes on to say that the governor's staff had emails and other electronic communications by Romney's administration wiped from their state servers, wiped out folks. And it cost a lot of money to replace those computers and get that job done and wipe out those records. $205,000 for a three-year lease on new computers for the governor's office. That is according to official documents and state officials. That is what Reuters is reporting. And the Romney administration apparently had to break an earlier three-year lease that provided the same number of computers but only at about half the price. So they're willing to pay twice as much. I guess Massachusetts must be doing well. Everybody must have money there. Nobody needs a job. Everything must be good. Uh, there in Massachusetts. It must have been in 2007. Well, the broken lease reportedly still had 18 months to run, folks. Now, I don't think this guy should be president. Also, and in other news, did you hear about this? The head of the Federal Aviation Administration, he is reportedly on leave after his arrest for drunken driving. His name is Randy Babbitt. He's 65 years old. He was stopped by police after they allegedly saw him driving on the wrong side of the road there in Fairfax, Virginia. 
He was alone in his car, police say. They charged him with driving while intoxicated. Now, needless to say, he took an immediate leave from his job, an immediate leave of absence from his job, which, of course, is now under review. We should tell you that Randy Babbitt also served as president of the Airline Pilots Association. He was appointed to the FAA, of course, in 2009, and that is, as we all know, the airline safety, U.S. airline safety watchdog. We'll turn to some international news. We'll go to France, where you might be interested in knowing of a movement there to abolish prostitution by criminalizing payment for sex. A bill could come uh, to lawmakers as early as January 2012. Around 20,000 people, you should know, are uh, believed to be working as prostitutes in France. Nine out of ten prostitutes, if you can believe this, are reportedly victims of sex trafficking. So this move attempts to look at prostitution from the standpoint of violence against women. More countries, including the U.S., should be doing that. And remember the deadly Ebola virus? You know, it kills more than 90% of the people it infects. Well, scientists say they've developed a vaccine that protects mice against a deadly form of the Ebola virus. Ebola is so deadly, so fast, that the fear is that it could be used against humans in an act of terrorism. <clears throat> In businesses, you tell me why the gas prices are so high. It looks like the U.S. is exporting gasoline and a record amount of gasoline at that. We exported, get this, 430,000 more barrels of gasoline a day than we imported in the month of September. Okay, that is the word from the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Now, the United States apparently began exporting gasoline in late 2008. For decades before that, starting in 1960, uh, the country used, we used all of the gas we produced here, all of the gas, and we had to import gas from places like Europe, okay? But demand for gas has dropped nearly 10% in recent years. It went from a peak of 9.6 million barrels a day in 2007 to about 8.8 .8 million barrels a day today. That is according, again, to the Energy Information uh, Administration. Now, apparently, the United States is on track this year to be a net, can you believe this, a net exporter of refined products. This is for the first time in 62 years. That's right, folks. What does that mean for consumers? You guessed it, folks. We could experience record high prices for gasoline nearly uh, next year, even though, even though, U.S. demand could hit the lowest level in a decade. So we've got more gas than we've ever had. We've got the lowest demand in a decade, and somehow they're going to justify charging us even higher prices than we're already charged now, and the prices are too high. So get this, folks. Next year, there's expected to be a, a conversation on restrictions on exports of gasoline. You better pay attention to your lawmakers, folks. We have really got to watch them because they're making money hand over foot. Of course, as usual, the only people that are losing are the consumers. Please pay attention to your lawmakers. In, in entertainment news, a very sad story, folks. She was a stylist on the TV show Gossip Girl, and she's in trouble. Her name is Lauren Scruggs. She lost her hand and suffered head, brain, and shoulder injuries uh, when she walked into the propeller of a small plane. Yeah. It happened outside of Dallas, Texas. The 23-year-old had been on a flight to look at Christmas lights. Authorities say they believe she exited the two-seater plane. It was very dark outside and probably turned around to thank the pilot, and that's when she walked directly into the propeller. Very sad news. Very sad news. And finally today, Bishop Eddie Long's wife, Vanessa, well, she finally filed for divorce. Okay, that happened last week. You know him. He's the pastor of a mega church. He was accused last year of inappropriate sexual relationships with four young men. Well, now that his wife filed for divorce, he's finally taking a leave of absence from his church. That would be New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. We should tell you that Eddie Long and Vanessa, they, that's, she's a second wife. They married in 1990. They do have three children together. Uh, Long has another son from his first marriage, which ended in divorce. It's about time Eddie Long stepped away from the pulpit because he certainly doesn't practice what he preaches since he reportedly settled with these four men for these inappropriate sexual relationships while he stands at the pulpit with an anti-gay message. Okay? Huh. All righty, folks. Those are your stories on your reality news check. I thank you for joining, you, joining me, excuse me, and I'll see you next time, and you have a good day. I'm Carol Angela Davis. This is your reality news check.